man, this is what I live for. Man. Halloween morning, been a long time coming. Got that buck right here. Got that buck right here. Well, we got the job done. Good decision to back out. Seems like every deer we kill this year is out of redneck. Day four. We're actually not late yet. We're gonna go in on the 220, give the 320 a break, and uh, hunt the ladder that we put up yesterday in the middle of the day. So, um, Dad's gonna be down about a mile south of us, and uh, we got a lot of deer on camera. We just need one to walk by. So, pulling out both ravens. The guy that walked by on the road hunting the neighboring property. What do you have on his shoulder? He had a raven on his shoulder, so. I think we're shooting the weapon of choice. Here we go. What's this weapon of choice? That's motor oil. Oh, now we're cooking. That's what you call motor oil. That's what makes you run fast.
education we just gave him. I want to know what this guy's tuition is because we are educating the hell out of him. Well, this beats anything I've ever seen. I think he really wants to be friends. Hi, Dink. Hi, Dink Dilly. Can we be friends? <laughs> Can't get rid of him. At this point, I feel pretty confident he's not gonna bust us, so. We'll just use him as a decoy to figure out where the deer are coming from. <laughs> this guy just won't go away. <laughs> I'm waving my arms as I rattle and he just doesn't care. I mean, as we're walking out, he literally is running up to us and I think he wants to go, go hang out with us. I think he wants to be our buddy. It's almost like when I'm rattling, he's like, there couldn't possibly be a bigger buck in the woods, so I am not concerned about anything. We are back on the 320 here in Elk County. We're gonna make a move tonight with the climbing stick, try to get a little bit closer to the middle feeder where the bucks have been coming out in the daylight the last couple of nights. Our big eight-pointer, Willie, he's been on his feet most. We got that big 10 in the area too. I think that 10 we filmed out here has been on camera. Really, really looks like him. So we're gonna just get close in to the bedding area. We think we know where they're bed. Uh, it's Thursday, day four. Time to be heading back home tomorrow night. So it's time to make a move. We're gonna go check a camera and then get our stand up. Well, welcome back, folks here today on Food Network is how to make a proper whole grain peanut butter and jelly in your natural environment. So you spread the peanut butter. This is creamy peanut butter. This is my preference. You can use crunchy if you like. Spread the peanut butter nice and even. And then the real trick is to buy you one of these squeezable bottles for the jelly that puts it out in a tape. Oh, <laughs> watch out, we'll grunt a buck in. Didn't know the grape juice was gonna grunt it. It was a little better when it was perfectly full. I got a little air trapped in here. Ooh. <laughs> you want some bread with that jelly? Hey, this is the proper technique. Get a close up of that jelly. A little glisten in the sun. We'll catch you next time on Huntline Food Network.
back to Health on the Hunt Line. This week's mini split topic is the roundhouse prosthetic. So many patients come in and on that upper jaw, they just are so scared of their gag reflex. They know that a denture will not work for them and their expectations for having something that's more like teeth is just really in demand. And the roundhouse prosthetic has allowed us to take patients from their natural teeth directly to an enhanced cosmetic result in one single visit. The use of PRF, the use of immediate implant placement and, and 3D x-rays has given us the predictability to get patients from A to Z in one visit. Check out some of the before and afters. Give us a call. The Roundhouse, in my opinion, is the best full arch prosthetic on the market today. Okay guys, I have got something I have been literally three or four years ago I asked Garrett for this and uh, I think he just dropped the ball on it. But no, we ordered our first Huntera map and I just got this in the mail today. We just bought the property out in Kansas, uh, the 320, and this is three field maps. Then you're supposed to be able to like, they're supposed to be waterproof, tear proof, just like really be able to go into the field with you. and figure things out. So we're going to develop our whole management plan around these maps and ultimately when we're done with the plan we'll order a new set of maps to kind of show the difference in the things that we have done here. Oh, let me get it turned right here. So you can see it comes, it's like a paper that is really durable and you can see we've got the topo lines. Huntera does something really cool. It almost gives you like a 3D view and a 2D image of what your property looks like. And, and you can get these topo maps. This is just how we just killed our cow elk. We're studying these topo lines and looking at where the pinch points were and where the bedding areas were uh, or where they were at least likely to be. So this is gonna be something that we use to develop our whole strategy around access for the farm, how we're gonna get back in here, where we wanna plant food and where we don't where we want to take away bedding area and where we want to leave it. So I really look for these Huntera maps to be um, just the key instrument to sitting back from a distance and, and figuring out how you're going to develop a property and, and, and making those little detailed decisions that are going to make your property better for hunting. So I'm stoked about this. We'll get a new version when we're all done. I'm going to show you guys the difference. Yeah, it is. It's chewed up, but that's good. I think I'd put my ladder over here. Pretty nice buck. Massive, too. Massive deer. He's pretty chewed up. But, good representation of what's growing on here.
just getting back from Kansas. Come back for the weekend, see the family, and spend some time with the kids. We're pulling into 54 Archery here and getting some lighted knocks. I did not want to shoot any of those bucks without a lighted knock. And uh, we just picked up a new buck on camera. We named him Triple Dilly because he has got three beams and he is a stud. Um, so we're going to go into 54 here. They're still open and uh, we're going to get some lighted knocks for the Raven and we're going to head back to Kansas as soon as we can get back to it. Went this way? And honestly, that's, I don't even know. I yeah. never really paid attention. Let's go look at the footage. Yeah, let's go on the computer real quick. Okay, we got back to the cabin. We're gonna check out this footage and see what kind of a hit we got. Boy, you did some amazing grunting too. So I'm gonna pause it and go frame by frame right here. Just shoot it first. Yep. So you see him and he runs off real slow. That's what's weird. But then he took and off then just And he really humping. starts humping. I, I think it's because he realized he was shot. And at first he just thought, oh, something made a noise. I think he, I think he just thought something made a noise. All right, let's pause it and slow it down here. As he comes through this right little the opening, that little deal and dude, he was walking fast. But bang, the hair opens up right there. Can you enlarge that? Because I can't see it good. Can you can you zoom that right there, Zip? It's hard to see it, but yeah. It's better. Hang on. See the little black spot? Right. Right there. Right there. Yeah. That's the tough to hide blowing up as the arrow went in it. Well, hell, you he just hardly hit a, touched it. You just hit a little bit into the hair and maybe just clipped the top of the loin a little bit. It's way above the backbone. We were wrong. Man, Dad, best self-filming job ever. Look at the pre-roll he got here. Uh, deer walks in, but through those limbs, just another example of we're just not quite ready. We didn't have this side of that stand limbed out. You know, if those limbs aren't there, this deer is busted all day. Uh, but what a great opportunity and awesome that we didn't actually mortally wound the deer. It 
is gusting heavy, enough that's going to blow our blind over. I'm sitting here to hold it in and uh, <clears throat> putting one of our Arctic Shield boots over the camera to keep it dry in the meantime because it's sleeting and raining. It's just the most miserable conditions I've ever hunted in. Hopefully we see a deer. <laughs> that's all I got. We got today and maybe tomorrow morning and that's it. So I'm going to try to make it happen. to the blind, two-year-old. Big seven-pointer. We, uh, we got up there and we found a couple of doe and a fawn, we think, and, and they were just kind of milling around by the pond on the other side of the hill we were stalking on where we had seen those bucks earlier this morning. It looks like they had moved out. There was no no deer up there at all. Um, we had a little two-year-old buck come behind us from back down the holler where we were sitting, and he kind of ran up over the hill. He was out searching too. So the deer are moving some, but we've moved down to a blind to try to get out of the wind for a little while. Um, it's it's just not letting up at all, and it's not supposed to. So we may we may find ourselves here for quite a while, but we'll see. See how it goes. Yesterday we had two bucks show up, 10:30 and 11:30 on camera here after a doe at about 10. So um, we'll sit here for a few hours in the middle of the day and warm up and chill. Well, we're plenty chill. <laughs> Yes, 
Man, our first rut hunt in Southeast Kansas certainly was a good one, but we definitely struggled. You know, moving there this year and not having the time to set up the farm like we had out west in Comanche County really made me appreciate the work we had done on the farm in Comanche County over the past 10, 11 years. And, you know, it showed me the value of those food sources, entry and exit routes, brush hogged paths, uh, you know, active cameras with, with history with deer. You just knew what was going on. Um, how many times this week were we on one spot on the 320 and the bucks were on camera in the daylight at the same time in another spot? Just a cat and mouse game. But as I was walking off into the sunset, I couldn't help but think two things. One, I'm gonna be back yet this year. And two, I can't wait to get back out here in the off season and develop this farm and dad's farms too, to what we had in Comanche, increasing our access routes, increasing our food and increasing our success with seeing big deer. We'll see you next time.